Hi, it's Nadine. Um, this video is going to be about uh, my journey as a Jehovah's Witness for 20 years from age 7 to 27. And now that I've been out of that religion for 20 years, um, it wasn't something I planned to talk about. I have to honestly say that 20 years of my life from age 7 to 27, I tried to block out that portion of it of my life. There was, it was a great life as far as my mother, friends I met, but that part of my religion, I, I tried to lock out and move on from it because it was so hurtful, um, controlling, limiting, whatever you can think of that was negative about it, it was. The one thing I think that I got out of it positive was it did keep me out of some trouble um, because I was always busy out in field service. Um, but I decided that I, I'm going to talk about it because I'm seeing so many people that I'm running into, a nurse that I work with, the Jehovah Witnesses that come to my house that are younger than me, young women, that I can see they're stuck. They're stuck in this religion. Some that are stuck, and then I've met some that are out of it, but they're still not free. Um, I was in that religion from age seven. I didn't know any better. I didn't know I was stuck until I got older, until I w went to college at age 17 after being in it for 10 years and really got to meet other people, be around other people, and then saw, this is not how everybody else <laughs> behaves. This is not how everyone else acts. Um, so I met a woman um, at a nurse that I work with who used to be a Jehovah's Witness. And the stories that she was telling me that she experienced of actual sexual abuse. I had a lot of mental abuse controlling from people in the Kingdom Hall. This was a small, very poor congregation in West Philadelphia. We were the West Park congregation off of 52nd and Gerard Avenue. If you're from there, you've seen me out there with my Watchtower magazine between ages seven to 27. Um, but what she went through, I don't live in Philadelphia anymore. I live in Texas now. And she was a Jehovah Witness for, I guess, 15 years of, well, she was born into it, but she left in her twenties as well. She's only in her thirties now and she's really struggling. And every, you know, night when I would get to talk to her, she said that me telling her of how I came out of it, went on with a life. I was disfellowshipped. Nobody that was my friend talked to me. My mother was sad because they treated her funny too, even though she hadn't left the religion because her daughter was disfellowshipped. They treated her bad. Um, but she said me encouraging her on um, how to come out of it, how to find your joy, how to embrace your freedom has been so encouraging to her, you know, because I'm, you know, 10 years older than her. Um, so I, I felt glad about that because it took a long time for me to get to this point where I would even talk about my history as a Jehovah's Witness. I was ashamed. I still had that fear, even though I wasn't a part of the Kingdom Hall and going, I still had fear because of all the things that had been said to me. If you leave Jehovah, you're going to go crazy. Look at what happened to Michael Jackson. Um, and I know it sounds so ridiculous now. But I believed it and had that fear in me for when I finally did leave. Um, then I met, so her telling me that I helped her made me feel so good. and made me keep sharing my experiences and sharing the things I did to heal my heart. Um, I feel like I was wounded spiritually, for sure. Mentally, it was a huge, I, it's like I have it was a period where it was like post-traumatic stress, where when I saw Jehovah's Witnesses, I wanted to curl up into a ball because of shame. Um, as my life went on, who knew I was going to have a child with autism? I kept thinking about what they said. If you leave Jehovah, where are you going to go? You're going to go crazy. This is the only truth. So when my child came with autism, I never, I kept thinking, is this my fault because I left Jehovah? This horrible curse 
on my child. Um, when my mom got sick with cancer, I kept thinking, is this my fault? You know, of course that's ridiculous, you know, but it was real to me. Um, so that meeting that nurse and talking with her was helpful because I was like, I have to speak out. Okay. So I was able to find my way out of the Jehovah Witness organization, but how many millions of other people um, are stuck? So Saturday, I was home, you know, Saturday morning, when you hear that knock on the door between nine and 10, 11, you know who it is. It's the Jehovah's Witnesses. So it was two Hispanic women. I live in the Houston area, a huge Hispanic population here. And one was older and one was younger. And when I say younger, she might've been in her late twenties. That's younger for me. So they came to the door. I had that dread as I'm walking because I can see who's outside my door before I opened it. And usually I wouldn't even open it. I opened the door. They, I said to the young woman, uh, no, so they said their spiel to me. And all I could do was look, I looked at the older woman's eyes. She was like my age. She looked fine. She was in her swing. She was serving Jehovah. This is where she wanted to be. I looked in the girl's eyes and it was like I was looking in a mirror of my own eyes 20 years ago. She didn't want to be there. She was, it was blank. It was robotic. It was not living. So as I usually do, if I can't avoid them, which I was surprised I even opened the door. It was me being led to open the door for this young woman. So they, um, I said, no, thank you. And I was, I never say, cause you, as if you're an extra hope witness, you know, you can tell them I'm disfellowshipped and then they won't ever come back because they're not allowed to come and talk to you. You should know the better, better. You know the truth. You were baptized. They're not going to come back and talk to me because I'm shunned. I'm not worthy of them talking to and I still would feel shame. So I wouldn't tell Jehovah's Witnesses when I met them that I was this fellowship, that I had been in the organization for 20 years. I still felt shame. So I let them leave. And then as I'm walking back to the kitchen, oh my gosh, it was just like, you can't leave her. You can't leave her. You have to say something to her. Plant the seed now. Who knows what's going to happen with that seed later? So, oops. So I go out, open the door. They were getting ready to get into a car. I went out my house to the curb and I looked at her, the young woman. And I said, please, I want to tell you, I want you to encourage you to investigate and get a relationship with God, a personal one for yourself. Don't investigate this organization of Jehovah's Witnesses. I said, investigate it. The older woman starts butting in. Oh, oh, thank you. Thank you. And I was like, please, I was once in your shoes. I said, I was in this organization for 20 years. I've been out for, it's coming up on 20 years. No, for 20 years. I've been out for 20 years. So I said, please move on. Investigate for yourself. Your God wants you to enjoy life enjoy all different types of people of different religions, different beliefs. They are not all wrong. And then the woman, the older woman had already gotten in the car. Now the young woman was listening. She didn't know what to make of what I was saying. She didn't have a response, but she was listening. And I, and I said, and then I went back in my house. So, but as I started watching the videos of the ex Jehovah Witnesses, I saw the same thing that I was seeing in other people that had left the Jehovah Witness organization. They were still bitter. Even though they left, they were like me. They still weren't free, even though they had been out of the organization a year, four years, five years, some 20 years like me. You could see that their mind still was not free because they still were looking for something from organized religion. Um, and I did that for like the five, first five, seven years, five to seven years, I was still looking for organized religion to connect me with my heavenly father. No, seek and you shall find. Pray, ask that every door will be opened. 
I have seen it happen to you guys, you ex Jehovah Witnesses, to don't take as long as I did. I took so long to come out of the, the, the shame and the fear that I was lit, walking around every day, but truly not enjoying life as God means for us to. I want you guys to quickly heal your spirit as quickly as you can. Heal your spirit. Heal your mind. Fill your mind with positive writings. There's so many beautiful, positive people, beautiful hearts and minds. Watch those things to encourage you so that you don't you don't stay stuck stuck because many people they walk away from Jehovah's Witnesses, kudos. They get this fellowship, kudos. <laughs> because you could because for me, kudos, because I might not have ever left. I didn't want to leave my mom. So um, but start healing yourself quickly. Don't dwell in the um as, as long as quickly as you can move through the healing periods of mourning and stress of being abused, used, lied to, shunned by family members, embark on a path of healing because there's so much wonderful life to be lived and you don't want to miss out on it. You know, so I'm going to make some other encouraging videos. I'm going to upload that video with me trying on my Goodwill stuff. But I have a lot to say about my journey for 20 years. They didn't want me. They, I was encouraged by the elders not to go to college. I wanted to be a registered nurse. So I had a lot of backlash from my congregation because I did go to college. I had a lot of backlash from my congregation um, because I was a nurse. How are you gonna be a nurse? You're gonna have to give people blood. Jehovah does not want you giving people blood transfusions. But I wanted to be a nurse since I was five. <laughs> my mother was very sick my entire life. And so I was exposed to hospitals and everything very young. And it made a difference in my little child's mind. If she had a nice nurse or a mean nurse, when I left her in the hospital for the night, that would dictate if I cried myself to sleep or if um, I felt like, oh, that nurse is going to get her some water if she can't, because she can't walk and get her own water. So that is just, I want, we need to hash out the pain, ex Jehovah Witnesses. We need to. I went through that, but I don't want you guys to be stuck like me. Move through it quickly. Start the healing so you can live your life. It's beautiful for what it is meant to be and whatever you want to make it with God's blessings. Okay, talk to you soon.